This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode number 304 of the Action Movie Guys podcast. I'm your host, Nate, and this is my co-host, Alex Figueroa. And on this episode... We are starting a new series. So not a new series, not a new franchise, but a new theme as far as our movies go. And we're going to be covering a few remakes of older movies, good or bad. And if I think correctly, all of the all of the originals of these movies are mostly considered very good. Some of them yeah. better than others, but very good. But we're going to let you know if these remakes stand up to those originals. And we do have a special guest this week. Oh, oh by the way, the movie's Death Wish. The, we're going to be doing Death Wish is the first one that we're going to be doing for a uh, remake month we do have a special guest you heard him on our last episode um you've seen him on instagram and on our youtube channel please say hello to mr robert rob let everyone know first of all where they could find you and who you are hi everybody yeah you you can find me on instagram i'm more active there at the big knock 007 on Instagram there. You get movie-related posts and stuff like that. There you and go. I think people Big might Knock, and that. that's Knock, N-A-K, by the K. way, for anybody. Right. Big Knock, N-A-K. The number 007. Um, all right. <laughs> Big yeah. Knock, 007. Now, Rob, thank you for being here. Let's go ahead and talk about thank this you. movie really quick. So this movie came out in 2018. It stars my dad, Bruce Willis, <laughs> and it was, it was directed. <laughs> it also has Elizabeth Shue in there, Vincent yeah. D'Onofrio. Oh, yeah. Okay. You got some actors in there. And then it also is directed by Eli Roth who is much more known for his horror movies than action movies at all. And it was written by Joe Carnahan. Now, Joe Carnahan, for us here on the podcast, the only movie we've done from him so far is The A-Team. He, uh, he directed The A-Team, the remake. We have not done Smoke and Aces yet, but that was another Joe Carnahan movie. But he wrote this movie, and Eli Roth directed it. So I don't know if that means anything to you guys listening, but there you go. Now, Alex, have you ever seen this remake prior to this viewing? Oh, no. First of all, <laughs> I, I I never seen it. This is the first time watch for me, okay? I'm going to be really honest. Okay. I didn't even know this movie. Came. I you mean, I know, know a lot existed? of people. I know a lot of people who's like, oh, Bruce Willis is a death wish, but I thought people were full of shit. I was like, yeah, right. So they're not going to do <laughs> Charles Bronson classic. For the last classic. five years thinking this was a make-believe movie? I thought it was a make-believe <laughs> movie. <laughs> oh, Instead man. of me going on Google and put death wish coming out, but I didn't do that for certain low. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> This is a first for you. Usually, you oh, just wow. have never heard of it. This is the first time you've ever heard of a movie and didn't think it was real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, we yeah. got a new bar, so I'm very excited to see what you say. Yeah. Um, Rob, I'm assuming you have seen this before. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. I own, I own the Blu-ray and also pre-ordered the 4K too. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you must enjoy it. So, you know, yeah. we'll get to some scores in a moment. But before we do, let me tell you about these Rotten Tomato score. And you guys are going to be very surprised with this. This has to be one of the biggest gaps between the two uh, audience <laughs> and critics that I can remember. I, I 70%? Mean, it's gap. way different. I mm. don't remember one being this big in a long time. The critic score for this is 18%. So very low, very low. <laughs> Not good. 18% okay. critic score. But somehow, some way, the audience score for this movie is a 70%. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that so is high. There's wow. a 52% difference between the critics and the audience. Alex, I don't know if you remember one this big. I can't off the top of my head. that we. No, this is the first in this show. That is a 60% get, gap between the two. <laughs> like, it, that is such a freaking... That's it's a big crazy. one, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Rob, anything to say on that? Do you find it surprising or interesting in any sort of way? Mm, yeah, I... I wow. I, I, I didn't think the gap was that big. I, I heard the, <laughs> the critic score, yeah, that's not surprising. But yeah. the 70% for the audience, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> wow. I'm way more surprised about the 70% <laughs> yeah. audience wow, score than I am about <laughs> the 18% critic score. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not me doing a spoiler and saying I think the movie's yeah. bad. I'm just not surprised that the critics would give this movie that. Yeah. I am surprised that yeah. 70% of audiences just loved it because I don't think this movie made any money. I don't remember it being a big... Oh, I, I'll uh, pull that okay. up right. I, I have it right here. I don't remember it being <laughs> a big hit of any sort, but for you would think for something that I, well I, received... I remember it was going going against uh, Red Sparrow when it came out. The Jennifer mm. Lawrence was, movie? Yeah, that was a big... What a bad then. weekend for the, yeah. <laughs> for the yeah. theater. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. Well, so. this was a budget of thirty million. Okay. And it only grows forty nine million. <laughs> Just a failure. Ooh. I mean, yeah. it, I wouldn't call it an outright flop because it only needed to make like sixty, but it did it. Yeah. It, it, it yeah. came in under. Maybe it did okay on video. It's getting a 4K, so maybe it has some sort of cult audience with this 70%. I don't know. Anyway, maybe. let's talk about the movie itself because Alex thought it was make-believe and Rob pre-ordered the 4K. <laughs> Rob, I'm going to let you go first. You are going to be talking about our main character. He's played by Bruce Willis, my dad, yeah. and he <laughs> is, what is it? Kersey. Paul? Is it Paul? Paul Kersey. Paul, Paul, Paul Kersey. Paul Kersey. Yeah. Kersey. Okay. What did you think? I liked uh, Bruce in this one. Uh, your dad here. Not bad. He, this time, yeah. instead, the Original played by uh, Charles Brownson was an architect. Now we now he's playing a, a surgeon or a doctor now, ER doctor. So I, I give Bruce a, a four. I thought he was uh, convincing at the role, and uh, you kind of feel his what's going, you know, what what happened to him, and you know uh, his wife's demise. And I give him a four. I, I th- and I think this is kind of like the the I think the last kind of big theatrical re- for, uh, release for Bruce uh, Willis. I think before. Before he came, you might be DVD right. I did a Willis, one million straight to video <laughs> movies after yeah. this. All right, Alex. So four from Rob. Alex, what did you think of Paul Kersey, the doctor, <laughs> not the architect? <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Bruce Willis is not a believable surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be, you know, I, and I go into these movies because first of all, I never even I thought this shit was fake, but <laughs> I, when the minute I was like, okay, I started to watch the movie, and I remember Charles Bronson was the architect, and I was like, right. Bruce Willis would be way more of a believable architect than a surgeon. <laughs> I tell you right now, yeah. so them flipping it was one of the worst things they did. I didn't believe it at all, and a surgeon learning how to shoot a gun and then doing. <laughs> Vigilante shit is not more believable than at least an architect in the Bronx. You wouldn't even fight that guy at the yeah. soccer game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for, so for me, it wasn't, it, it did with, in terms of the character flaws and all that, I like the family aspect of it because Bruce Willis does a very good job with family oriented right, right. stuff, like the, like the John McClane's and all that crap. But this is a little bit John McClane ish. In terms of the character, like he didn't bring nothing new, nothing different. Like it was just the same Bruce Willis action hero 101. Like it, it, you, you're paying me to do the same character I did for like 80 years. So, with that said, I'm not going to knock him and I'm not going to flaw him because I did like the character. I just think Bruce Willis was so miscasted as this character. I'm going to give him a three. I thought he was good, but he was not a believable surgeon. But that's not his fault. That was whoever casted him. So, I give him a three, though. I, I give him a three. <sighs> All right. Let me start this off with, honestly, this is true. I love I love Bruce Willis. Like, I like a ton of his movies. Yeah. I, I like him on screen. I just think he has, like, super charismatic and everything. But, you know, we have a little saying we came up with here on the Action Movie Guys, and it's with Sylvester Stallone. We call him, sometimes he gets a little sleepy and he becomes Sleepy <laughs> Stallone. So what I'm going to call this one is, we're going to call this Drowsy Bruce. Drowsy <laughs> it was drowsy Bruce. There's a lot of scenes where he's just kind of phoning it in. He's like talking with people. What can I do? What if I put a reward? What if I, there seemed to be no urgency yeah. anytime he's not shooting people. Now, when he's shooting people, he's really good at it because he's done a million action movies. So that's, I have no problem with it. But Alex, I agree with you. One, I can't help but compare this to the original because this is a remake. So I think this is fair right. game uh, yeah. to do this. And I really rewatched the original not that long ago these are two totally different characters charles bronson you believe it because one he used to be in the military he was like he was a marksman but but he was a conscientious observer because his mom made him promise not to shoot anybody so he gave up guns there's a reason though why he was so good at shooting and, and good at killing this dude literally never picked up a gun in his life he goes into a into a freaking bin. What is that thing called? A uh, the the oh the, oh, the storage storage bin. Yeah, the storage, storage unit. Storage, yeah. He almost storage shoots storage himself because it bounces yeah. around. <laughs> then the first night he's a vigilante, he shoots his hand somehow. Which I've shot a gun before. I don't even know how that. I don't even know how that could happen. But anyway, no, no, he didn't shoot his hand. No, no, he, he shoots it and the, the thing slider, clips his hand. The Dang slider away. from the gun. Yeah, it does. That's actually true. I've shot a if, gun if before, and uh, yeah, I mean, <clears> unless you're doing this with it, like yeah, crazy. but if you saw how he was shooting, he was on 
on the floor and he's shooting with the momentum with the gun. Like he never right. trained for here's that. Here's the problem. Yeah, but here's the problem. He shoots like yeah. three bullets before that and nothing happens. And then all of a sudden, one well, bullet. He's standing just, though. He's standing. It's he totally shoots. different. He's, no, he's it's standing. not different. The, Rob, the, the, you're the, the gun, gun, gun yeah. expert. You know what? No, you're the gun expert. It, is it true or not true? It, it's it's possible that can happen, but the the way the the way the guns are made now, Thomas Rob, it, it, the webbing of your hand will be at the below the slide. So oh. you got to have it pretty. You got to have yeah. it pretty high up. How did that part there. of his hand get above the slide? So he had that. a Glock 18. Can you, can it happen with a Glock 18? You got to have it pretty high. I mean, <sighs> the, this guy was I holding like, the gun upside down. <laughs> <and> he, <laughs> <shot himself. laughs> he said anyway, upside down. That was a little but, annoying. And then all of a sudden he becomes like a marksman. As the movie goes on, he's going now. He's pop, 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 pop. He could just blast everybody. <laughs> anyway, I will say I gave him a three, like Alex, though, because I do like Bruce. I like him. I like yeah. him in the vigilante scenes. It just doesn't make total sense, but I do like him in the family scenes with his daughter, with the yeah, brother. Yeah. Honestly, I did think he was very good there with Elizabeth Shue while she was alive. <laughs> I enjoyed it. She's him. hot. She looks amazing still, even yeah. to this day. So I like, I, I he's not a believable doctor, but he is a believable family man. Yeah. yeah. And he could be a believable marksman if the family man stuff was a little different. So a three. I didn't hate him, but he's he's not as good as Charles Bronson in the original. All right. Villain. Now, this is one of those movies where there's like kind of a gang, but it ends up being yeah. this main guy. Knox. Knox. Yeah, he looks yeah. like a real douchebag. What did you think of Knox? Ooh. Alex. Oh, me? Oh, okay. Yeah. Not Okay, well, first of all, there's not many scenes with Knox. And the only thing is towards the yeah. end, you, you see him when he goes in the elevator. He goes, oh, you're going home? I'm going home too. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, all right, cool. So, like, and then you had the scene in the club where he exactly. shot at him which I yeah. thought that was a cool sequence then you had the beginning the burglar scene so there's only really three scenes in the film he was good I mean he was really good but I give him a two because <laughs> there was not much of him and it's Bruce really Willis team. doing yeah Bruce Willis is doing Batman shit he's like beating on everybody else trying to get yeah. to this guy so like if you would have did it in a group I would have gave it a three I, I thought it was in a group aspect I would have given it a three but in terms of this one guy the head guy who led this whole thing yeah he did kill the why I mean yeah, he killed the wife, and one of the guys was trying to rape the daughter, and which I was okay with. I'm not okay with the rape. I'm just saying is is that right. they didn't, they <laughs> didn't close. like. Yeah, I, that was really close. <laughs> I wish they did a little bit more of that. I, I felt like she stabbed him in the face, but then in a few scenes before, she said she was learning how to fight. So I was like, well, so what happened to your training? Like I, I was a little thrown off with that because didn't the brother say learn Kaf McGraw or whatever it was called? Oh, yeah, Krav Maga. Yeah, that yeah. that way. <laughs> That's yeah, so like, I mean, and I, I mean, I gave it a two. I, I don't know. I, I feel like he wasn't memorable. That's fair. Rob, what do you got? I, I gave, I, I guess we're going to go with Knox. So I, I gave him a three. This is like a kind of like a standard villain. You can see him, you know, it's not, it's, it's not really fleshed out for me. So, mm. and yeah, we seen, we seen these kind of, you know, bad guy thugs and in, in, in the, in the hundreds of these action movies. I wish it was fleshed out a little bit. Yeah. Yep. So three. I'm going to agree with everything you guys both said. And I give you the same score as my buddy Alex. I give him a two. He's just there. He's, he's literally standard thug. That's like his character. Yeah. And there's no motivation to what he does as far as the crimes go, right? It's literally like a random, he gets the information from that that Spanish dude. It's this little syndicate of, of guys who do breaking and entering and steal expensive stuff. And that's it. There's no really, you know who I wish was the villain in this? That guy called the Ice Cream Man. At least he got a cool oh, name. Cool. You know, yeah. he's selling oh, drugs. Yeah. He's having kids be his like drug mules and stuff like that. They could have built, uh, like built him up somehow and made him like uh, the reason why. But nope, he's just a guy with a cool name. Instead, we get Knox, who doesn't have a cool name. Um, get shot, goes to the hospital. And, you know, he has all the information. If he really was smart, he could have just told the cops everything and said who did everything. And the guy would have got put away in jail and he would have just been able to live his life. No. But no, he wants to be an idiot and be like, not tell them nothing. And then all of a sudden he knows like freaking these guys look like Russian military dudes at the end of the movie. I'm like, how does he even have oh, yeah. these connections? But whatever. I give him a two as well. I, I think he's kind of silly and he's unmemorable. I didn't even remember his name if Alex didn't tell me. Right. OK, let's get to the, you know. It's what we do here. Let's get to the action. Rob, what do you got? I'm going to score the action at, at about uh, 3.5. I, I liked it. Uh, it was 
it was serviceable. Uh, uh, especially, especially the scene where um, Bruce gets the uh, gets the guy underneath the car. Uh, you know, it's it kind of kind of like it looks like a scene from Hostel or something. Yeah, yeah. Then he I'm not then, then he goes Jack yeah. is yeah that was cool. <laughs> he brains everywhere, and like going like Nate said, like these guys are like towards like the. Uh, climactic shootout at the at the end. Of, why are these kind of guys coming with like all these automatic weapons? You know what I mean for a bunch of thugs. Yeah, yeah. All but, uh, yeah. So I give it a man, I give it three point five. It was, it was a all right. Three point five. Three point five from Rob. Alex, what do you got? All right. So when it came to the action here, I, I was a little torn because it, it, I mean. Eli Roth gave you enough action, but to me, it's not memorable action. Like, besides yeah. the guy getting dropped with the car, but I mean, other than that, you you know, Bruce Willis is an action star for a reason. And if you're going to have an action star be a star of a, a most famous, you know, novel turned into a movie, right? Because Death Wish is a, it's a book, yep. right? With Charles Bronson, another, I mean, we haven't tackled him here yet, but legend. action movie legend, oh, yeah. right? It's so poor. I was like, this kind of sucks ass, like, in terms of action, because Bruce Willis in certain scenes looked like he did not want to shoot a gun. He was just lazy shooting in, in certain scenes. But then there was other scenes that were fun, like in the scene with the, with the, with the, uh, were they in the bar or whatever the hell it is, where, where they, he went to get the wedding ring and they were oh, shooting the out. Shop, yeah. Yeah. The pawn shop. That scene was actually cool. I liked the scene at the, at the club when the guy's shooting at the, everyone's chaos is erupting. I thought it was cool. The, the, when he first did the first night with the, SUV. I was like, that is pretty cool. But other than that, it's not. Oh, and then the ending. One of one of the most lackluster killing of a bad guy. You thought the <laughs> dude Woody Harrison in the last movie died shitty. This dude's Bruce Willis shot his assault rifle like he did not give a fuck. He was like, give me my two million dollars because this movie's over. And he just shot there. He just went. Bruh. Let's see. He kicked the table. The thing came down. He shot him. And I was like, that is it. Like, I mean, I know he killed the other guy around the house but that shit to me it didn't I don't know. I wanted more oomph. Like when I saw, like when they put Death Wish, I was like, okay, you know, I'm thinking this is going to be a full out modernization of the Charles Bronson, right. which you could do so much with. Now I didn't get it in the action. So I'm not going to give it what I don't want to give it a two because I think it got enough action and some fun right. Bruce Willis moments. So I'm going to give it a three. I thought it was good. I don't think it was great. And I definitely don't think it was perfect. You guys said it all. And I had that written down already as well. I gave it a three. The saving grace for me is at least it's rated R and you know me it's gory mm -hmm. like there's a lot of blood and right. squibs and so I'm into that I do love that the house at the end and that dude falls off the stairs and like lands on his neck and it gets all crunched yeah. like that's pretty gross I also do the only part at the house that I like as far as the shooting is when Bruce Willis is laying under the bed and he's holding the gun like it's the guy's gun and then the guy comes right. to the doorway he like <laughs> shoots it up I thought that was a pretty clever way to do it other than that this is the most standard like point and shoot action that that you can yeah. get and you can tell eli roth is not an action director because it's not bad it's not like wow this is shaky camera and i can't but it's also just there there's no like flair to it it's just like here's these guys shooting and that's it that's all it is so i gave it a three i think it's average but the gore helped like the blood helps uh if right. this was pg-13 i would give this a two or a one but yeah. because there's like heads bursting and at least i had a little bit of fun with that so i think i've seen worse but I've seen much better. So I yeah, gave but, it a three. Well, you said it the, the best though. Like Eli Roth is a horror guy. Right. There were scenes in this movie that you saw his horror element, like his directing of horror. Like in the beginning when the guy's hiding behind the doors That's and they creepy. walk. It was yeah. very creepy. I was oh, like, yeah. Yo, you know yeah. what? I was like, if this guy could really know how to shoot an action movie, I was like, the both blending of both genres as a director would came out awesome. That whole scene right there. But it, it you're right, Nate. It looked like that he did not know where to go with these where to place the cameras for these action sequences because i'll say man and we didn't even get a car chase and i love my car chases <laughs> yeah. like yeah, we didn't true. get a car, chase. car chases in this the beginning of the movie i was like yo this is bruce willis in the car like when remember when the guy got shot and the cop oh, yeah. got shot and i was like yo this camera shot was awesome it was on top of chicago oh he's yeah like honking horns yeah, yeah yeah and i was like wow he's a cop but he was the doctor and i was like yeah. oh, this is whack. he's like gotta get into <laughs> or stat yeah, yeah. He's like, you're gonna see the of, guy. Shoot. Give me ten cc's of O negative. I don't know. Yeah, he's he's making stuff up. All right, storyline, Alex. Okay, you know, <laughs> I felt bad for Elizabeth Banks. I mean, Elizabeth Banks. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Shoe. Um, Shoe. Shoe. 
Yeah, I, I felt bad for her. I, I, she was great in the movie. I thought she was a great wife for what she was in. And I liked the, the story was okay. Like it was, I don't know. I think it could have been so much better. I, I think, I think him being a doctor threw me the fuck off, bro. I'm going to be honest. Like I did not feel it. Like this is not an action movie. Show. You know what this movie reminded me of? And we haven't doing it here. Okay. It reminded me of collateral damage with Arnold. He's a fireman oh, yeah. that did not know how to shoot, but all of a sudden he's an action star. <laughs> Throughout the whole movie, he's chasing the bad guys and shooting. And, Don't worry, and it's on the schedule. We will be on doing the, that. right, but, but but you understand yeah. what I'm saying though? Yes, yes, yes. Like it's like you putting like Sylvester Stallone. He's gonna be a therapist, and then all of a sudden he's gonna be an ar- a one man army looking for the guy who killed the the thing. So like yeah. I didn't like that. The the story I like the family elements of it. I think what could have made the movie a little bit better if they killed the daughter too. Might as well just kill them all. Don't have him, the daughter survive. Like, if you're going to have this guy go to the deepest well and whatever, kill the daughter also. Have the daughter, the mom die. And then you, uh, then I go, okay, it's a little bit believable because now he wants full revenge on the whole thing. Like the Kevin Bacon movie that we saw. That's right. Like, oh, yeah, that he sense, just, yeah. all of a sudden he started just going after everybody and then he died at the end. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. This one should have did that, that style and I would have been okay with it. But they did this whole, she'd survive. And then it was not believable at towards the thing. I was just like, uh, so I give it a two. It's decent, not good, not great, and not perfect. Fair enough. All right, Rob, what do you got? Uh, oh, sir, was, uh, I gave it a three. Yeah, because you know <laughs> we 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 we, we kind of seen this kind of cookie cutter kind of story out. Yeah. What, what was what was kind of funny is uh, the scene in the gun store and like and uh, I, I like that little table uh, gadget when you kick it and pops. So I wish I had one of those. Rob wanted to order. We one. gotta get <laughs> you <laughs> one. We're gonna get you one. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And it's see, this is the thing about you, you want to buy into the character. Like, like when you go back, you, you can't help to compare like to the original when Charles Bronson uh, beat up the thug with the roll of quarters and the sock. Remember his first reaction? He is all like out of breath and he threw up. And he and like everything. throws up. Yeah. 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 And not, we, we, we can relate to that. He never, he never, he never, you know, he's an architect, a peace loving architect, you know, mm-hmm. then he, he, then he, first time he goes, you know, his wife is lost. So his daughter was raped in the movie. And then, then he goes through like uh, assaulting one of these guys. And he, your first reaction is all that adrenaline he throws up. Yeah. And this one, it, it was like too convenient. Like, he, how did he find the gun? Like in the ambulance and he kicks it. And, no, and uh, it was, then it was the in, the, in, in the hospital. Falls off in the table. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It falls in the gurney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, he sees his <laughs> no. watch. He was like, wait a minute. Motherfucker got my watch. <clears throat> right. And I go, oh, yeah. I wouldn't be shooting in, in inside a, a storage unit. That's that's not that's Done. not smart. Well, that's, that's, I think that was the whole point of, of, of that, that scene. It was like, he didn't know. But he still did it anyway. Towards the, yeah, the he whole went movie. back there he and kept shooting, yeah, shooting in there. <laughs> yeah. He put a, a little <laughs> sign and then all of a sudden, he th- oh, the sign will, <laughs> it will save me. Yeah, Mark Smith. You know. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, three, you said, right? Three. All right. This was a tough one because <laughs> there's so much stuff in this that I don't like. You can't. This is totally different than the original. The original one is like 30, what, no, 40 years older than this one. And it's way more yeah. like edgy and hardcore, you know? And I don't mean gore. This one's gorier. But like Rob said, the first one, literally the daughter gets raped and then like goes insane, like goes crazy, right. can't even talk anymore. Um, then you have the character who's her husband. In this one, it's his brother instead as that other character, right? The wife dies. That's the same in both. They r- reversed it here where he's in Chicago. And then at the end, she goes to college in New York. And here he's in, he lives in, Ch- oh, no, that's this one. And the other one, he lives in New York. And then at the end, he goes yeah, to Chicago. Yeah, so, the yeah, one. so yeah. they like flip flopped it. They totally changed the character. Uh, the motivation is different. And here's what I don't like about this movie. The first movie, the people who do the crime, they just get away. Like they just leave. You know what I mean? Like the, the point is not specifically He doesn't specifically solve the mystery of what happened, you know, at his house. And in this movie, it is the standard revenge. I'm going to figure out who did this because the cops can't figure it out and take the law into. And it's very generic in that way. I kind of like in the first movie that they just get away like they're random people. They they get away with it. He does vigilantism to stop other stuff. 
but he doesn't solve the crime of his own thing. And yeah. the cops in the original movie, there's that cop character who's trying to track him down. That added oh, a yeah. layer of like suspense. Like, is he going to get him? Is he not? Here, you never really feel like they're going to get him. And even at the end, they find out it's him. He's just like, all right. But <laughs> you're like, have a good life. So I thought that was a little weird. Like, there's a lot of stuff compared to the original, even just story-wise. I don't think it's as good. I gave it a two as well. I, I, I And I really hate all the radio show stuff. Oh, Grim yeah, Reaper. Say, yeah. He's the oh, Grim yeah. Reaper. What do you think about it? And you could yeah. tell they're trying to be topical oh, and yeah. current. Sway you know? in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so this you got is Sway in here from- and Man Cow. <laughs> and- <laughs> I like the Grim Reaper. I think you should keep shooting these people. Um, I, I hate all that stuff. So I gave it a two. So two, two, three. All right. Overall, Rob, what did you think? Uh, just okay. So I gave it a three. I gave it a three. Uh, it seems like I liked it more in 2018 than I did now. It, did, it, did, it didn't age well. Yeah, agree. Yeah, and right. uh, oh. yeah, and uh, it's it, it just you know it, it didn't age. I, I thought it, I I remember I, I was all jazzed up when I heard about it. They had a at Rego. They gave out a collectible ticket and all that. And oh uh, yeah, I got that one. Yeah, I got yeah, and uh, yeah, and I, and I watched it a couple of nights ago. Yeah, it just kind of lost its flavor a little bit. Mm. You know, fair enough. All right, so three, Alex. What do you three. got for the movie that you thought was fake? The movie I thought was fake. <laughs> so you know, it's crazy, but I enjoyed it for what it was. Like it was a fun, not yeah. fun. It was it was oh. a sit down action movie. Like Nate always says, like a, a dad action movie. Uh, yes. Like that's pretty much it. Like if you really like Bruce Willis in an action film, that's what you're getting here. Like if you're, if you're gonna sit here thinking you're gonna get a new version of Death Wish, nope. Like not at all. But in, in terms of that, I, I will be picking this up in 4K to add it to my action collection because I I would I would see it again if I'm like doing laundry. I was like, okay, I could throw this on just to pass time that i will say second i will say is that i think this movie was very bright for this style of movie like for instance i would have shot it more darker tone at night more because I, I felt like that's where all the bad people come out. That's where stuff happens. This movie is just so bright. Too and glossy. You said too glossy. Yeah, it felt yeah. very cinematic. Like you don't you want gritty. You want yeah, like, like the original true was. to life. Like the like the original. Yes. Yeah. Like you want that. I mean, Chicago's a cool place, but I would have shot it again in New York. Go to the worst part of New York and just film. Like sure, I would have had some film in Michael LA. May. <laughs> yeah, or in LA. LA. Yeah, did something like that. Like my Michael Mann to me, like oh. his style could work for this sty- type of movie. Handheld. Tony oh, Scott. Yeah. Hand, yeah. Uh, Tony Scott would have did a great job with this movie. Yep. I'm trying to think of like Heck, a director James now. James Wan did it. Death Sentence was a better James Wan, remake yeah. of Death Wish than this was, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, Anthony yeah. Fuquaqua. What's his name? Uh, a- Antoine Fuqua. 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 Antoine Fuqua. I think he would have did a great job with this movie because of the equalizers. So I, I think he would have did a good job with this movie. But anyway, that's what I would have done. But I, I gave it a three. I, I kind of enjoyed it for what it was. All right. So I own this movie digitally. I will not be getting a 4K of it because I don't ever think I'll watch it again. So it's just in my voodoo collection. It's there. I But I did give it a three. I think it's serviceable. Like, yes. yeah. sure. If you don't compare it to the original, it is a de- it is definitely definitely a dad movie i wouldn't call it watchable crap because it doesn't Mm-mm. it doesn't reach the lows yeah. necessary and it also doesn't reach the like fun necessary for that it's just sort of regular it's like a basic i don't i i, I could see why critics would give it an 18 i don't think it's that bad i don't think it's that good either it just sort of is there bruce is in it one thing i i love vincent d'onofrio as an actor and i like him in this did you guys feel the same way i I constantly thought he was they were gonna like make it like he was in on it somehow like he yes he's bad with money yeah that's what i thought yes i thought he owned money and then they came to his brother because he was rich and they killed his family nope he's just actually good the whole time so it was a little, yeah. it felt weird to me watching it. It, it plays like, uh oh, at any moment now, it's going to be revealed that he hired the guys and it went wrong and Bruce Will is going to have to deal with right. him. And that might have been better, but it didn't in happen. In the couch. I yeah. think in the couch, right? When he was talking to him in the basement. Yeah. I thought he was going to reveal it. I was like, yeah. oh, that was but messed nope. up. They're just brothers. So in yeah. a way, I guess it's a little refreshing that they didn't go that route, but it might have made a little more flavor. I it would have been better. Up. I think it's fine. All right, Robert, what is your total points for this one? Total is going to be 16 and a half. 16.5. Alex, what do you got? 13. Me too. 13 for me as well. <laughs> Remake month getting off. 
to a hot start. With- <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I will say this. In defense of Death Wish, it yeah. wasn't as bad as what we did like other it's not bad other as Rollerball. Not bad as Rollerball. That's a I think this was very watchable. Um, it is. Than the others. It, it is. It's just... Yeah, it was just... It's that. It's just I'm doing hand yeah. motions. If you guys are listening, you can't see me. It's just... <laughs> mm, you know, it's just... Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I'm yeah. pretty sure I showed my actual dad this, not my dad Bruce Willis, and he thought, this is pretty good. <laughs> so, you know, it's like one of those. Yeah. Standard revenge movie. All right. Yeah. Here's what we got coming up. Next week, we're launching a brand new franchise. Going to be doing a little Mad Max. So we will be right. reviewing the first movie, of course, Mad Max, which will be followed by The Road Warrior, and then Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, and then Mad Max Fury Road. Now, we had covered a long time ago the 4K disc of Mad Max, but we never reviewed the movie. So I'm actually <laughs> looking forward to rewatching this one. And then continuing on with Remake Month, we're go- doing a remake of a John Carpenter film that I know Alex doesn't like, so I don't know if you like the remake. We're doing Assault on Precinct 13, which mm. is starring like Ethan Hawke is in this movie and Lawrence Fishburne. Isn't Lawrence Fishburne in this movie? I think movie? Lawrence Fishburne, Fishburne is in yeah, this Maria movie. Yeah, Maria Bello, and it's directed by that French guy who made Bloodfather, which I love. So oh, yeah, I yeah. haven't seen this movie in forever, but let's see let's see if it if it if it's good or not. Yeah, I haven't seen this one in a while. I mean, I remember we did a lot, and I don't, not me and you, it was me and uh, Dave. We did the oh, did a, uh, original. Redo, uh, oh, yeah. Gabriel redo. Burns in this one too. Gabriel Burns. Yeah. What a cast! So I'm looking for. I haven't seen this one since it, in like the mid 2000s, whenever it came out. I remember from what I remember, I remember liking the remake more than the original. I know you're not a I, fan of the original. I, so. I hate the original. <laughs> like, I, I, there's no way. I mean, oh, I'm not right. gonna cough. That, yeah. yeah, I am not coughing it up for everyone. Going, yeah, I'm gonna talk like this is the best movie. I hated the original. I, I that one I remember. I was like, hail to the motherfucking no. This is whack but i know there's people that like it so i'm not gonna knock it i mean you like it you like it but yeah i don't like the original john carpenter one but so, this might be i remember for you yeah i remember liking the ethan hawk version of it i felt like it was more of a story of it but anyway yeah but that's it anything else besides that no robert thank you for coming on the show of course thank you for having me having you. appreciate it thank yeah you. we'll definitely have you on the awesome. future for another awesome. episode and again everyone if you want to follow robert on instagram that's big knock n-a-k double o seven not right. the letter O, 007. You can follow him on Instagram and he loves movies and he loves talking about movies. So give him a follow there. All right. So there you have it, guys. If you guys want to follow us on our social media accounts, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Netflix Reviews. Check out the podcast with him and his friends called Netflix Movie Reviews. Uh, Nate also goes live every other Monday when we're not live on YouTube. Head over to, again, Instagram at Netflix Reviews at 9 p.m. Eastern. He teamed up with his old buddies from this podcast and they do some movie reviews and they chat it up for an hour so you guys could join in and have fun with that anything action movie guys you guys can head over again to instagram at geeks and flicks other than that head over to our official website at www.geeksandflicks.com and he is your host nate from nate flicks reviews i'm his co-host alex figueroa thank you so much big knock a knock <laughs> at doing <in> the, <laughs> the thanks for having me again all right thank you so much be all to each awesome. other and geek out